In this video, we are going to react to a scene from Tommy Boy. Can I first and foremost say rest in peace, Chris Farley? I'm Liz J. Simpson, founder of the Big Money Movement, accompanied by Cheryl Parks. All right, you ready? Grab your popcorn, strap in, let's watch it. The ready? prep. <laughs> yes. I got it. Sorry. I'm ready. All right, hey, let's go. Soup make me look fat. No, no, no. Your face does. <gasps> okay. Okay, let's check you out. No comment. All right. <laughs> it's a clip, huh? <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. All right. Now it's sale time. So remember, we don't take no no shit from anyone. No. no for an uh, we don't take no prisoners. We don't take no for an answer. No, no. Oh yeah. We don't take no for an answer. Yeah. We don't take no for an answer. We don't take no for an answer. No. Okie dokie. Listen, <laughs> listen. Gotcha, thanks. Bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Terrific. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Goodbye. Let me say, maybe. He doesn't even know well how to Well, then, I, I'd just like to add that the spectrometer readout on the nickel cadmium alloy mix indicates a good rich strobe and fade, decreasing incidence of wear to the pressure plate. If you could just. Whoa, little fella, uh, you're not speaking my language. Right. He's not speaking anyone's mm. language. What my associate is trying to say is that, uh, our new brake pads are really cool. You're not even gonna believe it. Like, um, let's say you're driving along the road with your family. <laughs> okay. Come on, let's go far. Then all of a sudden, there's a truck tire in the middle of the road, and you hit the brakes. <laughs> Whoa, that was close. <laughs> now let's see what happens when you're driving with the <laughs> other guys' brake pads. You're driving along, you're driving along, and all of a sudden, the kids are yelling from the back seat. I gotta go to the bathroom, Daddy. Mm -hmm. No, damn it. Truck tire. I can't stop. Oh, oh, oh. There's a cliff. Oh. And your family's screaming. Oh, my God. Oh my God. You're <laughs> not in the line. No, I can't feel my legs. It's me, and the medic gets out and says, oh, my God. New guy's in the corner puking his guts out. <laughs> <laughs> All what because you want to save a couple extra pennies. <laughs> and to me, it doesn't get out. I mean, now. that's a good pitch, though. Right. It was a good pitch. I'm sold. <laughs> you validate? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, so where do we start on this? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, so I have to first and foremost say, like, the anxiety in the beginning of like, oh my God, I can't do this. Like, that is so common with sales. At yes. the Big Money Movement, we help women entrepreneurs land five and six figure corporate clients. And so we've trained thousands of women around the globe. And without fail, almost everyone yes. has some sales anxiety, right? Like, I don't care how long you've been doing sales. Right. I still get butterflies before absolutely. like- Absolutely, <laughs> I absolutely do. I, I feel like if you don't get butterflies, you there's you miss something. Yeah, yeah. Because you should not just be completely, like, I got this. Sales is such a, there's such complexity and layers yes, to it. Yeah, it's you can't know. Yeah, yes. you can't know that this is all just gonna work the way you think it's gonna work. So yeah, yeah definitely. I love that he mastered his mind, but he was like, okay, 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 all right, and I'm ready, right? And so I love that. Um, I also like the prep, right, before the sale. Yes. He's like, all right, what are our outcomes? What are we trying to do? <laughs> right. have a plan. Right, right. We need it's to like, have we're a not plan. taking no shit, first <laughs> right. and foremost. <laughs> right, exactly. And just the hype up, right? Okay, yeah. so the hype up, and then after he said, we don't take no for an answer, like the first three or four yeah, calls were like, no, okay. see you later. All right, goodbye, you <laughs> right. sure? Right, exactly, I don't know what to say. Yeah. So I think there's, I mean, there's so much there, but I mean, the scene where he creates urgency and yeah. right, I mean, literally that's what, you want your buyer to feel that idea that like, oh, I can't miss out on this. Yeah. I have like I have to make a decision yes. because there 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 are things at stake. Yes. Now, whether you do it that way with the classic cars and the family screaming, I can't feel my legs. Yeah. I don't know that that's how <laughs> you want to go. But I did just hear. Um, I read something over the last couple of weeks, and I read that using the words 
imagine this in a sales yes, call really are powerful. very, very powerful because mm -hmm. you want your buyer to actually visualize. I've never used those specific words, mm -hmm. but it's just the visualization of what it looks like when they get yeah. to the desired outcome. Yeah, I love using the word imagine. Yeah, that is that, that is a word that I will use at times. And I also, to your point, you know, there are many times where we can psych ourselves up but still, it's like, what if they, Mike Tyson says everybody has a plan to get hit in the face? face yes. So he's like, all right, yes, I'm ready. And then he gets in the conversations and you hear no. And then they're like, okay. Right. But what I think is interesting if there was a sales coaching is, you know, you don't want to focus on the thing that you don't want. Right? right? You want to focus on the desired outcome. That's why role playing and having a library of language and yes. talk tracks is critical because yes, he psyched himself up and said, we're not taking no for an answer, right. but they it's... never planned for how do we respond when we get a no? Yes. So if no shows up, then what do we do? Yes. Yeah, there was no plan for that. That's why when they got no, they're like, oh, well, I don't think I'm supposed to take this for an answer, but. <laughs> but I don't know terrific, what to do. Terrific, terrific. Right. So I'm just gonna get up and right. leave. Yeah. And or how about this? We are looking to get a yes. Yeah. Right, we are we are focused on getting a yes, and mm -hmm. these are the reasons we're going to get a yes. Yeah, and or like even the gentleman that said maybe no yeah. plan for that, no yeah. plan for anything. <laughs> so key piece of this is you should have a plan. Yeah, right, and and literally a practice plan where you can feel safe and you can kind of air things out a little yes. bit yeah. and understand what that feels like and get questions and and try to keep yourself calm so that you're not like you know someone asks a question and you immediately like. Oh my gosh, it's this. It's like, yeah. no, the question could just be a very neutral question. Yep. I just needed to know too. if mm -hmm. X, Y, Z. So yeah, I think that the key there is keeping calm, <laughs> yeah. having a plan. I think we do have to get ourselves excited mm -hmm. at the right time. 100%. Right? Whether you're doing your prospecting, whether you're going into presentation, mm -hmm. um, get yourself excited. I know that you talk about surrendering for mm -hmm. the discovery call mm -hmm. and being hyped up to the, the prospect. Right, yeah. right, right. Rick Ross type <laughs> yes, hype. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just knowing your own personality and where you need to insert those things mm -hmm. to show up with the right energy because okay. it literally is that transfer of energy it's that is impactful. I do, I, I completely agree. It's a transfer of energy and the talk tracks. Interesting here is that when they did get some interest, clearly by both of their responses, they didn't know how to have a conversation to create value. Correct. There were no questions asked, right. right? Do you notice how he expressed interest? Like, okay. And immediately the response was technical language right. and jargon. Let me go to, let me now go to listen. The, the data sheet. <laughs> oh my, and we see that over and over, right? You get so excited that somebody's interested, but you're not speaking in their language, right? right? So it's making sure that I'm not giving you know tech jargon. And with the women we coach, because they are offering a, a service that's based mm -hmm. off of their you know expertise, it's so common that we'll talk to them and they start throwing out acronyms and, right. and language. And we're like, oh, that's technical jargon. Yes. How can you say that in a way that somebody else understands? Right. I love, I believe it's Albert Einstein that says like, if you can't explain it to a five-year-old, then you don't understand it well enough. Correct. Right? So that yes. first response is like, I don't know that you understand this well enough right. to explain this in a way that creates value for the end user. Right. right. And I think the other thing is I didn't hear it any questions no right so no. okay maybe that happened before and i didn't we didn't see that right, piece right. but there were no questions right so mm -hmm. if it's a maybe right there's some questions that come yeah. from that yeah and then it became well let me just go to the pamphlet mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that, let me hand this over to you so you can read yes yeah, so you can mm -hmm. read it and the guy's like yeah i don't know i don't i don't know anything about this this yeah. is your this is your thing yeah yeah talk to me so i understand why your thing is going to get me to what i what yes. i need right and so there's all of those um that's why sales is just what it is. It's yeah. the nuance <laughs> and understanding it and being able to, I will say, practice it, whether it's role play, mm -hmm. but just getting comfortable with it. Yeah. So you're not so re reactive. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to respond, not react. Yes. yes. And I, I honestly think Chris Farley was onto something powerful. Like using a story oh, in sales yes. is powerful because I didn't Such understand the first explanation, and then all of a sudden, I mean, I think there was some power. Maybe not you, somebody's <laughs> precious model cars, but you saw his uh, physiology change yes. and him say, okay, 
let me let me just talk to you right, right. straight right. on right let, let me let me give it to you straight and then he used real world examples to tell a story That's which a was a compelling point. story he's like this is this is the situation you're risking being in right on the path you're on the status quo right, right? this is the potential cost of the yes. status quo are exactly. the paramedics throwing yes. up over here this guy's having his first day the car is on fire i can't feel Versus. my legs <laughs> i can't feel my legs <laughs> Versus this would have been the situation you could have just had a safe, peaceful stop. Right. And that would have been the uh, end of the story. Exactly. And so the, I think storytelling is extremely powerful. Clearly we know, right, that they exaggerated it and made it this whole scene. But I do like that posture of like, okay, let me talk to you. Let me tell you a story. Insert yourself in the story. Yes. And, and let me make sure that you understand the transformation. So outcome. key in today's environment, mm -hmm. literally. Your buyer has already done a lot of their own research, mm -hmm. and they understand when you get there mm -hmm. that you are potentially the solution. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Well, this was fun. So let's dive in and react to another classic movie, Jerry Maguire. Click the next video so you can join us there now. Bye.